Hello again, boys and girls. Hello, acorns and all sorts. It's great to see you again. Now, I've come out into the garden again with our butterflies. Look, here they are. Can you see them? Can you see them all fluttering around? These painted lady butterflies. I've tried to get it so that you can see them all, but it might be a bit tricky. Anyway, you can definitely see three of them, and the other two are further down in the butterfly garden. So, we've come outside so that they can get nice and warm, and so they can get used to the lovely sunshine and the garden. And our garden, I love it at the moment because it's got loads of buttercups in it. It's only about a week since we cut the grass, but there they are, growing and uh, looking like nature's gold. I love this time of year because the fields are like golden fields, all full of buttercups. And I thought the butterflies might enjoy seeing them too. So while they have a flutter in the breeze and get ready to be set free, I thought we could have a little chat about what I've learned about painted lady butterflies. Before the last few weeks, I knew very, very little. I just knew that they were orange and black and not very much more, really. I knew that we had plenty of them in this country. I knew they weren't endangered, but other than that, I knew very little. So, well, what I've learned is that, well, firstly, when they come out of their chrysalis, they are orange and black but they're more black than they are orange. And then gradually, over the next few days, the orange parts get more and more. I'm not quite sure why that is, whether it's to do with camouflage, keeping them protected when they're just emerged from their chrysalises, and maybe they're less easy um, to be spotted by predators, so perhaps things don't eat them as easily when they're less orange. But now, they're beautifully orange. Can you see them on the walls of the butterfly house? I think you can see four of them up here. One, two, three. And there's one there, and the other one's here. And they're all sunning themselves. It's really lovely to watch. I, I, I wish you could be here too in person, but I think you can see them pretty well on the video. So, what have I learned about painted ladies? Well, what do you think, Nibbles? Oh, you better come in and have a listen too. Oh, he is. <laughs> Nibbles has been helping me, haven't you, Nibbles? Yes, we've been reading on the internet all about painted ladies. And we have learned that they live all over the world. They live as far north as the Arctic Circle, don't they, Nibbles? They do. And they live as far south as tropical Africa. That's a long, long way apart. And different sorts of climates too, because part of that um, part of the part of those parts of the world are they're very cold, and some parts are very warm. So how does that work? How do the painted ladies manage to survive in both climates? Well, it's because they move. You see, they move, and when one part of the world is warmer. They go there, and when the other part of the world is warmer, they go there. So they, they do something very clever called, oh yes, Nibbles, thank you, called migration. And do you know that our painted lady butterflies in this country, when it gets a bit too chilly in our late autumn and winter, they fly south and they go to Africa. And then when Africa gets a bit colder and it gets to Africa's winter, some butterflies come back again and they come to further north, like our country and other parts in Europe. Isn't that exciting? Aren't they clever? They really are, aren't they, Nibbles? Yes. And I'll tell you what else I found out. They fly so high on the way from here to Africa that for a lot of years, nobody had ever seen them do the journey. They thought that they were born in Africa and then some of them migrated north, but then that they didn't go south again. They thought it was just one way, but then they did some really clever technology recording 
using radars and they found that the butterflies, in fact, they do fly south when it gets cold here and they want to go to warmer climates. They do fly south. They just go so high that humans couldn't see them and they need to use radars to detect them. Isn't that fascinating? Isn't it, Nibbles? Oh, yes. And he says that ordinary people like you and me, they did the tracking. They used the radars to detect them. So thousands and thousands of people collected all that information and um, put it into a database so that we knew so much more about the painted lady butterflies. Isn't that fascinating? Oh, Theo says he's blown away by that. He really is. He loves nature. He loves anything that is on our planet, anything at all. He loves all of God's creations and he says that it's very, very good and beautiful. And did you know that each painted lady butterfly, when it's migrating, it can fly thousands of miles, thousands of miles from that to move tiny little wings. Isn't that clever? And when the painted lady does its journey on the migration, it's never done it before. Somehow, it just knows where to go. Isn't that fascinating? And it's a bit too far for one painted lady butterfly to go. So one butterfly will do a bit of a journey, a thousand miles or so, and stop, have a bit of food, lay an egg, Egg becomes caterpillar, caterpillar becomes chrysalis, then butterfly, and then they're off again. Another thousand miles or whatever. And then they stop and they have another egg. And do you know, it's a bit like a big relay race. And up to six generations of butterflies are involved in that migration. Isn't that amazing? I think maybe they stop where they stop for refueling and to lay another egg is, is just the right temperature at that time. Yes, isn't that fantastic? Clever little butterflies. Shall we have a little look, Nibbles? Oh, Nibbles has been watching them every day. He's feeling a bit sad. I think he thinks he's going to miss them when they fly away. It's sad, isn't it, when you've watched something grow and you've helped to feed it and helped it to grow and learn. And then, then you have to let it go free. But that's, we always have to do that to things that we love, don't we? We have to let them be free. We can't keep them in a cage forever. We have to let them go off and see the world. It'll be a very happy moment when we see our butterflies go off to see the world. And we promise we'll share it with you. All right, so we'll be back soon. We'll be back soon. Bye, Aiko.